I'll admit, Netflix's last Kids on Earth was close to slipping through my radar since I didn't hear much hype for it, but watching it, it's just pure unadulterated fun. Emphasis on unadulterated. I get it! Honestly, it plays like a zombie horde game, only the protagonists are children all alone in an abandoned city in mortal terror, so that calls for some good fun. Jesus Christ. Boy, that, that sounded a lot more horrific now that I think about it. This must be a joke, right? The show is based on a book series created by Max Brawlier, which I'm hoping I pronounced right, who has had an extensive record of books under his belt, and this series acts as an adaption of those books with him on board to make it. So it's sort of like Hilda in that vein, especially since the books are still being written. The main premise is about this group of kids who live in a monster slash zombie apocalypse and have to fend for themselves in a decked out treehouse filled to the brim with all sorts of kid stuff like video games, junk food, and such. It's a simple premise, but it manages to work well in its execution by treating it like you're watching a video game. Think Left 4 Dead, but with kids, only without the horrible, horrible mangling of bodies, because I think even Netflix thinks, yeah, that'd be too far. Well, that's the point. The main characters are definitely the strong suit of this outfit. The main hero, Jack Sullivan, is this plucky type of kid whose foster family abandoned him, which, that's such a dick move like they smooth left him behind they didn't wait to see if he made it home they just bailed out and he was like right there too so it's like hmm but either way he treats his time in the apocalypse like a video game by setting up achievements for himself to accomplish like steal some hats off zombies ride on some monsters destroy the boss zombie and such he's pretty energetic and keeps a positive attitude on him just as well he can be pretty weird like when it comes to his crush and can even be a bit of a bungler she hugged Benny McCutcheon, so I ran over and hugged him, and I got a secondhand hug. Weird, but totally worth it. Let's boogie. He's ultimately just a big dingus, but a fun one at that, and you can even sympathize with him whenever you see him having those sort of down moments, cause he is in sort of a very dreadful situation, so you can understand that, but thankfully he keeps a nice optimism to himself. There's his best friend Quint, who pretty much is a nerd in all senses, just an average weenie character, but he is a good friend of Jack, so you can find some enjoyment out of him in his interactions with Jack, and more or less serves as the techie of the group, since he was able to build a pretty sweet car for the group to use, as well as some cool weapons. Another ally to Jack is Dirk, who's the big tough guy of the group. He helps fight back against the monsters with freakish strength. And I do mean freakish. He was a bit of an antagonist to Jack and Quint, but he ends up joining with them and actually finds some common ground with them, so you can find his character good for wanting to actually help them out. There's also Jack's crush June Del Toro, who's basically a major tough girl. She will not stand for someone getting in the way of things. She at first gets upset with the gang for barging in to save her since she was doing fine on her own, but she soon accepts their help and even enjoys Jack and them's company. She can have some fun just like everyone else, and that's ultimately what works with this crew, is that they're all very fun and likable characters. You can even empathize with them since all of them got left behind by their families in some way, some by accident and some neglectfully, but either way, they pull through that hurt by sticking with each other and showing great friendship amongst themselves. They're just a great ensemble of friends and you just have a lot of fun seeing them kick zombie ass. You can't really ask for much more. We did it! The world of this series can be pretty creative with all the different monsters and their designs. You got some that are four-legged mammal types, and some that are more bird-like, and even some that are based around sea life. Some of them are even friendly like the crew's pet rover. They all manage to look pretty cool, especially with the help of the animation, which has a nice soft palette to it and allows for some fluidity with the character's motion. You do get some good comedic slapstick jokes from it, as well as some good action sequences whenever the characters have to fight. It can be pretty pleasing to the eye, that's just something very nice about this series. It's soft, but when they want to go more hardcore for a good impact happening to a zombie or a monster, it manages to pull it off very well. That's commendable. Outfit beat complete! 
great. This is an all around fun series. The characters highlighted with their great personalities that can sometimes clash with each other, but allows for things to be interesting. The world of the apocalypse can be fun with the characters using it as a means to fend for themselves, making some creative weapons to fight these creative monsters. The animation is smooth and has a pleasing warmth and soft palette that's inviting, especially for an apocalyptic series. It's just a genuine good time you can just have watching some kids fend for themselves, fighting hordes of zombies and monsters. But that's just a thought.